Thank you, thank you very much for this kind invitation. I've been requested by Professor Scambino Napolitano to provide some short comparative analysis between the Japan and the Italian legal system. I um, prepare my short comments in Italian, so now I'm trying to switch my brain into, into English. So uh, I would like to focus my attention on two main uh, aspects that we have uh, heard uh, before uh, by Professor Colombo. On one hand, the idea, the difference between sports dispute and the legal disputes and the original idea of the former director of the JSAA and uh, more in general the interferences and the relationship between the sports court system, arbitration and state courts. And on the other hand, the second topic I would like to address in a comparative perspective is the arbitration consent issue because I think the Japanese model is a very interesting example. So as to the first uh, issue, uh, sports dispute versus uh, legal dispute, the idea of the former director of the JSAA was to uh, make uh, as broad as possible the scope of sport arbitration by arguing that uh, since uh, these are sports disputes, they cannot be litigated before a state uh, court. I think the Italian debate somehow has been uh, the opposite way around. What I mean is uh, the starting point uh, for our legal system is Article 24 of our Constitution, where we can read that everyone is entitled to bring an action before a state court in order to protect either a legal right or a legitimate interest. Because of this provision, it has always been uh, sort of complicated to create a zone uh, uh, for sports court uh, where state courts were left outside. So it was uh, complicated to uh, create uh, what we can call in Italia Riserva uh, della Giustizia Sportiva because uh, everyone is an, always entitled to protect the legal right before, before a state court. So I would uh, say that from a theoretical perspective maybe the two approaches are uh, the opposite but if we look at the law in action as we have heard uh, uh, by Professor Colombo actually I think the result the outcome are very similar. Uh, Japanese courts have uh, constantly, constantly recognized that if uh, a sport dispute has an object which is a legal right you are still entitled to go uh, before a state uh, court. So I think here we have at the end of the day a similarity between the two uh, legal systems. If we read Article 4 of the uh, current code of uh, uh, sports justice or, or sports court system, uh, we can read that letter A that uh, pure sports dispute are generally reserved uh, to uh, sports courts, uh, which is uh, consistent with the idea of sports dispute that do not need to be uh, litigated before a state court. But then, uh, every time we have a legal right uh, which is uh, uh, involved in a sport dispute, uh, after you have exhausted all the sports remedies, all the remedies offered by the sport legal system, then you still have the chance to go before a state court. So the interesting point, if we compare Italy with Japan, is uh, the role of arbitration in this uh, system. Because we have heard that arbitration in Japan is basically now the main uh, uh, instrument for the sport uh, legal system and sport adjudication. While in Italy it is a more, it's more complicated to understand where, what is the role and the position of arbitration in a sport disputes. Because we have a, a sports court system which cannot be defined as arbitral tribunal uh, in uh, strict legal terms. They do not render an award that is regulated by the Italian Code of Civil uh, Procedure. So uh, arbitration would be 
uh, an alternative not to sports court uh, but to state courts, an alternative, uh, a remedy that can eventually become relevant once you have exhausted the sports legal remedies. So this is, a, I think, a very important difference between the two systems. Why the JSAA is the place where you first uh, litigate a sport dispute in Japan. Uh, sport arbitration in Italy has a very residual role uh, nowadays, and this has been uh, substituted by a, a sports court system that are not, uh, and I speak under the supervision of Professor Fumagalli here, of course, uh, uh, that cannot be uh, strictly defined as uh, arbitral tribunal. Uh, we have an exception uh, under Article 4, Paragraph 3 of the Italian Code of Sport Justice for a pure patrimonial dispute, where basically it is stated that uh, uh, federal statutes uh, of a sport federation can defer this dispute uh, uh, to uh, arbitral tribunals as an alternative to sport courts. Uh, so in this case, arbitration would be directly the place where you can litigate uh, uh, a sport dispute that has patrimonial, pure patrimonial aspect uh, as an alternative to sport courts. So uh, in basic terms, I would say that instead of distinguishing between sport arbitration and state court, as in Japan, here we have three different uh, um, dispute settlement methods, which are sport courts, arbitration, and state courts, where arbitration is more an alternative to state court than to sports courts. Um, the second issue, the second point I would like to discuss briefly uh, is uh, the arbitration uh, consent. We have heard before by, uh, from Professor Colombo that in Japan um, uh, statute by sport federation can insert an automatic acceptance of arbitration, or we can also maybe call it a standing offer to arbitrate, but the athlete has an option to either accept this offer and start an arbitration, or alternatively to uh, go uh, before a court. Um, I would say the Italian system is uh, uh, quite different from this. Athletes do not have uh, this uh, uh, alternative because uh, if we first read uh, the, the, the general principle on sports uh, justice uh, and uh, in particular uh, principle 8 uh, which uh, is uh, titled the clausola compromissoria which is uh, um, maybe somehow confusing uh, but what it says that uh, statutes and the federal regulation provide that the affiliates accept sport justice as it is uh, regulated by the sport legal system the sport system so basically once you uh, enter into a federation you are automatically accepting the entire sport system and you are waiting uh, to go directly before a state court, we, which will be there as a residual remedy only once you have exhausted all the other uh, sport uh, remedies. Uh, this is the so-called pregiudizialità sportiva o vincolo uh, sportivo. But this applies not only to arbitration, uh, Actually, this is why I was saying that the title Clausola Compromissoria is a bit confusing because uh, uh, Principle 8 refers to all the regulation of the sport legal system that nowadays have a very little role for arbitration. It is uh, actually a principle that refers to uh, the sport courts in general more than to, to arbitration. But uh, even in those cases where the uh, statutes of sport federation provide an arbitration remedy, once the athlete Adair, enters into the federation, he is obliged to uh, go to start an arbitration. He doesn't have uh, an option 
like in Japan, to either opt for arbitration or for a state court uh, uh, litigation. And uh, um, this is uh, so because of the doctrine of the so-called uh, relatio perfecta, meaning that once uh, the arbitration clause is mentioned by the form that you are signing before you are entering into a federation, it's like accepting an arbitration agreement. You are accepting by reference, uh, you are entering into an arbitration clause uh, by reference. But we know that this uh, doctrine, this uh, principle has brought uh, the attention of not only uh, scholars but also tribunals uh, around the world. Uh, the famous uh, Pechstein case uh, uh, that has been uh, uh, litigated uh, uh, in Germany and uh, ended up before the German Constitutional Court, which uh, eventually said that, that this doctrine is legitimate and that an athlete is bound by an arbitration. And this uh, was uh, uh, a very important decision because it reversed uh, an opinion of the uh, High Court of Munich in Germany, which said exactly the opposite, which said that actually this scheme is illegitimate because the athlete is forced and doesn't have any negotiation power because if you want to participate to a sport event you have to assign into this uh, arbitration agreement. So I think that the Japanese approach uh, which leaves this room, which leaves uh, this option is uh, um, a very interesting uh, um, approach because it avoids the problem that has been addressed recently in this very famous uh, Pechstein saga. And uh, these were my uh, two comments. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your uh, very interesting comments. Um, I'd like to uh, add some uh, res reply to your, uh, some, some of your comments. Uh, first, um, about the uh, legal dispute, uh, the, whether uh, this sports dispute, a uh, relation between sports dispute and legal disputes. Um, I think uh, now, uh, although uh, the former president of the JSCA uh, told this, uh, it, is, uh, it, it is not at all uh, supported by academic opinions and uh, need uh, no uh, case law. So I think uh, and at the epoch uh, where uh, when he discussed this issue, uh, I think he had the intention of promoting the arbitration as a president of the uh, JSA. So it's a bit strategic uh, view uh, for that. So uh, I think uh, this view is out in Japan uh, current, in the current situation. Uh, secondly, uh, it's very interesting to know the place of arbitration in the Italian sport judicial system. Um, in Japan, uh, the reason why we pro try to promote arbitration is maybe that an uh, it is quite difficult for an athlete to go to court uh, with some Social, sociological reason. Uh, it's morally very difficult for an athlete uh, to take an action against an um, association which he or she belongs to. And so maybe uh, arbitration is an easier choice. Uh, I, can't, I can't clearly. Uh, explain the situation, but uh, in Japan generally, uh, it's um, it's quite difficult for for an uh, individual or particular an athlete to take an action against an uh, entity group what he or she belongs to. So uh, that's why we created an alternative, which 
would be more acceptable uh, for uh, for this situation. Um, about an arbitrary concept or a automatic arbitration uh, clause, exception clause, um, there are several possibility of interpretation. Uh, namely, uh, in my opinion, uh, it, it does not uh, necessarily exclude uh, uh, the interpretation that uh, this clause uh, close the door for an athlete to go to not uh, giving him or her uh, an option. Uh, but um, when we organized a um, workshop in Japan uh, at our university, uh, the JSA's position is, uh, the JSA shows their position that it's an alternative or it gives an option to an athlete. Uh, so uh, Professor Colombo, uh, uh, based on this uh, position, uh, view, he Today he made a presentation, but um, and it's true that uh, there is one case concerning karate uh, <coughs> that an athlete took an action before court, even uh, in spite of the existence of one uh, automatic arbitration exception clause uh, against an association, and the court rendered a decision. But um, it's. In this case, I think the association didn't uh, appear the court uh, without, uh, without contesting the jurisdiction. So uh, the situation is not so clear to me. Uh, that's, but uh, as you mentioned, uh, this uh, interpretation of an option, uh, uh, close as an option, is um, quite nice uh, for an athlete, but um, from a viewpoint of private international law, this kind of arbitration clause is not so no, usual, or in other fields, it's, uh, it doesn't accept, uh, ex exist uh, such an uh, arbitration clause to give a choice, uh, to give an option, uh, with, an option with an option to go to court uh, is quite exceptional. So uh, let's see. Thank you very much.